When deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Master, stars Robert England, Lisa Wilcox, Tuesday night, and is directed by Rennie Harlan. Guys, before I get started, make sure you check out all my previous Nightmare on Elm Street reviews. I'll put a link to the playlist below. Uh, check that out. Have fun. So guys, I just finished watching The Dream Master. I haven't seen this movie in quite a few years. I remember the last time I watched it, though. I did find it interesting. But I'm going to say this right out the gate. This is where the series starts descending in quality. So anyway, on to the review. So the last Nightmare film, uh, Dream Warriors, was just this huge, massive hit. And immediately they went into production for the Dream Master. And the Dream Master, like Dream Warriors, was a huge hit too. It even made more at the box office than Dream Warriors did. As a matter of fact, I believe it's the second highest grossing nightmare film behind Freddy vs. Jason. But some might not consider that a nightmare film. It's more of a crossover film. And I think a big part of that was this was Freddy's heyday. This was the time where Freddy was everywhere. Uh, he was just all over the news. Kids were dressing up like Freddy Krueger. You know, he had established himself as an icon at this point. And people really were just eating it up. They couldn't wait to see another Nightmare film. And this one really picks up where Dream Warriors left off also. It starts off with Kristen, uh, but this time played by Tuesday Night because Patricia Arquette uh, did not come back to play Kristen. She was moving on to bigger and better things. But Kristen is having the nightmares, but Freddy's not in the nightmares. Freddy is gone, but she still always has this fear in the back of her mind that Freddy's going to come back. And the way Freddy does come back is where the story really starts having its problems. And you don't want to have problems with a movie uh, in the first act. And the way he comes back is a dog by the name of Jason, by the way, pisses on Freddy's last resting place. And then Freddy comes back. I can't explain this shit. So Freddy then kills off the last remaining Elm Street kids, you know, Kincaid, Joey, and Kristen. But Kristen pulls Alice, played by Lisa Wilcox, into her dream, and Freddy uses Alice to continue his killing spree. And before I get into the pros and cons, let me talk about the director, Rennie Harlan, for a second. Rennie Harlan uh, had only done one movie before this. He did uh, Prison, and at the time, he was pretty much a homeless director. Uh, he was actually showing up at Robert Shea's office every day trying to get the job of the Dream Master and he was wearing the same clothes. The producers were literally telling him to take a bath. And I find that interesting because Ronnie Harlan went on to be a big director. He directed Die Hard 2, he directed Cliffhanger and other big action movies. And it's just always interesting to see that, hey, anybody can make it if you have a dream. You know, you start out with nothing and with tenacity and hard work, you can accomplish anything. Ronnie Harlan did it. Now, like I stated earlier, Dream Master does have a lot of problems and it is really the start of the decline of the Nightmare series in my mind. And probably because the story just really just gets so convoluted. I mean, is it understandable? Yes, but by the end of the movie, you really just don't care. But there are a few things I do like about this movie. First off, I like the character Alice, played by Lisa Wilcox. She's probably the best part of this movie. She's actually a pretty decent actress and you are invested in her character throughout this movie. And I like that third act, that final showdown with her and Freddy. It's, it's good to have uh, an opponent that can stand toe to toe with Freddy. And what's interesting about Alice is she is the dream master. She is able to control dreams and she can even absorb powers from other people that she pulls into their dreams. Like uh, in the third act, she's actually performing karate on Freddy because her brother Ricky did it. <laughs> this movie actually has way too much karate in it, by the way. Also, I did like some of the dream sequences in it. One scene I did like was when Alice and Dan are trying to save Debbie and they just keep going around and around in circles. And eventually they find out that they are dreaming and Freddy is really just messing with them. Also really like the music in this movie. And for my last review for Dream Warriors, I forgot to mention Dokken. <laughs> And Dokken was one of my favorite metal bands, I guess you could say, in the 80s. I'll admit it, I was a glam metal fan in the 80s, or hair metal. And I listened to Dokken 
and I listen to Motley Crue and all those bands, but the song Dream Wars is really just an awesome song. Well, there's a band in this movie called Vinnie Vincent Invasion, and, and the guitarist Vinnie Vincent used to actually be in the band Kiss, but he was kind of a megalomaniac, and so he got booted out of Kiss, and then he formed Vinnie Vincent Invasion, and the lead singer was Mark Slaughter, who ended up quitting that band and forming Slaughter. But one of their best songs is in this movie. It's called Love Kills. <laughs> And I actually still listen to that track quite often. Also, 2G Knight, who plays Kristen, she sings the opening track uh, to this movie. And I actually like that song. It's actually got kind of a, an 80s feel to it. This whole movie really is just a product of the 80s, all the way down to the hairstyles. And I really dig that aspect of it because I was a teenager in the 80s. Okay, now let's talk about the problems of Dream Master, and there are a lot of them. First off, I hate to say it, but Freddy. Freddy really just goes overboard with the one-liners in this movie. How's this for a wet dream? <laughs> in the Dream Warriors, Freddy, he kept the one-liners in check, but in this one, it's just like every scene with Freddy has a one-liner in it, and I lost count. I actually was writing down the one-liners, and I just stopped writing them because there are so many. And my big problem with all the one-liners is it takes out the horror aspect of the movie. It becomes a comedy almost. And I don't mind mixing comedy with horror. Evil Dead 2 did it perfectly. But I think one-liners are just kind of lazy and just really just a cheap way to infuse comedy into a horror movie. Also, I'm not a big fan of um, a lot of the kills in this movie, uh, especially Ricky. Now, originally there was supposed to be this big elaborate death sequence, but instead, uh, because of the lack of funds for this scene, they ended up just doing a fighting scene where Ricky is fighting an invisible Freddy, and it really looks stupid. I also wasn't a fan of uh, the death scene of Debbie where she turns into a bug. <laughs> it was just more creepy than anything. And lastly, the acting in this movie is pretty bad. Uh, I would say Lisa Wilcox is the best actor in this movie besides Robert England, but for the most part, all the other acting in this movie is just really weak. Now, the previous Nightmare movies, they're not Oscar-worthy acting performances, no, but this is where the acting really just started taking a nosedive. So in the end, I would give the Dream Master a humdrum. I think if you're a massive Nightmare fan, you'll probably enjoy it. I do enjoy some aspects of it, but it's not one that I go to quite often. I usually stick to the main first three, and I actually enjoy the remake, and I know I'm going to get things thrown at me for that, but I stand by that. I enjoy the remake, and I'm looking forward to reviewing that one, actually. So anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on the Dream Master? Looking forward to hearing them. Guys, thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and Drum Dumb out.